So this is the MA5B Cushcraft. Um, my wife, I don't have social media, so my wife has been helping me ask questions and you guys have responded and I appreciate it. Uh, I'm new to ham radio and you guys have helped out a lot. But a lot of you have requested me to see this Cushcraft up close. Um, I haven't used it yet. I don't know the performance of it yet, but hopefully, um, in this video, I can help you decide if you want to use it or not, and I can tell you some of the things that I've done and learned in putting it together. So one of the first things I would do is go online and download the copy of this PDF version, because this is what they send you in the box, and a lot of the lettering and verbiage in here is not very legible and you can see this is a much cleaner version I don't know who put this out there but if you just google the manual the the font and everything is a lot more readable and it helped a lot um, this one they can do a little bit more they need a little bit more quality on this the second thing I did was uh, went and bought extra bolts um, I'm sure that they sent the bolts. The package the bolts came in was ripped. And uh, there's a couple bolts probably floating around in somebody's delivery truck. So I had to go buy extra bolts to uh, finish the assembly. I bought some extra clamps. They call them worm clamps. Um, they're just hose clamps, muffler clamps. Um, I bought extra of these. I was going to double clamp every uh, joint, but... When I weighed them out in my other package, it um, almost added an additional pound, believe it or not, uh, to the whole antenna. So I decided not to double clamp all the hose clamps. So one of the first things that I ran into when I was putting this together was uh, these traps. Which direction do they go in? Now, I have very limited knowledge in ham radio, and I've never seen this antenna up uh, in close in person. And I don't know anyone personally that does ham radio. I don't have an Elmer, so I was kind of on my own here. And the verbiage they use uh, to tell you which direction this trap goes is a little deceiving. And you kind of got to decipher that they're talking about this EC and this EE and this EC part. So on this side, it shows nothing. It's just a blank trap. So to answer the question, the arrows always point out on either side of trap it's going to point out what i did was uh, these connections um, are not that great so i siliconed and weatherproofed all these connectors here and here uh, you just got to add a little bit of weatherproofing to them from here this is element one this is element two and this is element three well, when you get out here, this is just a temporary piece of PVC pipe. Uh, when you pick it up and you start twisting and turning it, you get a lot of torsion because this aluminum is malleable. So these U-bolts, they hold it to it, but it doesn't help with torsion. So if there's any torsion, especially in this element number three, it becomes unlevel. And to solve that, um, I watched a YouTube video from a gentleman in the UK, and he said to get this grip tape. And it really does make a huge difference when you torque these bolts down. It grabs and adds friction to these U-bolts against this aluminum. And here is the tape that I bought. It's, you can get it on Amazon. So when it came to tightening element one and element two, um, I like things to be snug. Uh, and I can put a lot of torque on stuff. Uh, but these pieces are fiberglass, so you have to be real careful on how hard you tighten this U-bolt down. Uh, so what I would do is use a ratchet or a wrench, and I would hand tighten it until I felt like it was snug. And then I would double check it um, with a torque wrench, and I would put it on about five foot-pounds on this torque wrench. So this is the boom mast plate. And uh, this is going to secure your boom to whatever nipple you have here. This is temporary. Um, you can see this aluminum is very malleable. So it's not hard to bend this when you start tightening on these U-bolts. 
So what I did was I went to a different torque wrench because I needed a deep socket and I didn't have one to fit the drive of my other one. And this one is on inch pounds and I set it about 80 inch pounds to torque each of these bolts to feel like it was really set really well. So you can over tighten these and you'll bend it and we don't want that. So for me personally, uh, 80 pounds was fine for me, but it's in inch pounds. So even on these hose clamps, or they call them worm clamps, uh, I would hand tight them uh, with a nut driver, 5 16 nut driver. And then I would actually go back with a, a torque wrench. And again, this is in inch pounds. And I found that 85 inch pounds worked really nicely. And I was very surprised at how many more turns I could get uh, and make it tight. But the difference between me hand tightening these was, was there was a drastic difference. So to make sure they're all uniformed, I would go torque them to about 85 inch pounds. So when you go to mount these radials, um, you just need a Phillips, and I also used a torque wrench. And I found for me, between 35 to 40 inch pounds worked well uh, on torquing it. That way I'd have consistency throughout all the radials. I found some of these would be off the aluminum, and then some of them would crush in and be touching the aluminum. But I found a comfort at right about 35 to 40 inch pounds would work great for tightening these. So when you go to mount these traps, um, it's important to get the arrows facing outward, but it's also important for the traps underneath to be facing down. And the, the best way to do that is to take a welding rod. You can hold a, riding, a welding rod in each one of these and you can tell if it's straight or not, or lay down, look up, and check each individual one. Another thing that's important is making sure all your radials are aligned correctly and you just get far away and you just kind of crouch down and you kind of just eyeball them a little bit, make sure they're all in the same direction. That just takes a little bit of uh, tuning with the eyeball, um, especially on this element one when you go to get this seven inches from here to here, um, it wants to move when you go to tighten it. So just snug this up, get your seven inches, step back, straighten up your radials, and then cramp down on it. And then use your torque wrench or just tighten it by hand. So it's also important when you're hooking this up, as you notice on element one and on element two, uh, they're separated here with fiberglass. And uh, don't over tighten these, you will crack this fiberglass. But the wiring, uh, you need to keep the wiring uh, the same. So black is going to be on this side. Black should be the same over there. Red should be on this side. And it should be the same. It should coincide over here. This is where your coax connects. So here's just an overview of the MA, the Cushcraft MA5B. Uh, the measurements between element one and element two are 29 and a half. From element two to element three are 55 inches. And these are center to center. And then the only other measurement they tell you is that element two should be from cap to cap, 205.5 inches. And when you do that, you want to you want to make sure that this last little piece right here, this one's not flush up against his boot, and then on the other side, it's way out here, so you wanna split the difference, which as you can tell, it looks like maybe half an inch on each side to get you 205.5 inches from in from cap in to cap in. Uh, this is torn. I don't think it came from the factory, from shipping probably. Uh, this boot is torn right here. So I'll probably just take some number 33 plus electrical tape and cover it up. I don't want it to be a permanent because I might have to take this boot off and take this apart. So just inspect all your stuff that comes in. So another problem I faced was this element one and it calls for tuning it. Uh, this piece right here needs to be seven inches from here to the end of the cap. Well, you really have to fight this boot 
because this boot wants to come out. This boot, if you look at this one right here, this is element two. See how the boot comes out? So on element one, you really have to fight this boot because this overall length is seven inches. So you have to push and fight this boot in to get this on, to get your seven inches when you go to set it. And then element three, it's nine inches from here to your end cap, and that's not a big deal. You just measure it out. You can mark it with a Sharpie, and it's fine. But on element one, um, originally, um, I was only getting about seven and a half inches to seven and a quarter, and then you just have to fight this boot, tuck it in really hard, and push this on really hard to get your seven inches from here to here for your tuning. 